good afternoon one and all this is memana fatima occupational therapist from pinnacle rooms network begum pet facility hello everyone this is afrin begum an occupational therapist from the pinnacle rooms network begum pet facility today the webinar is on visual stimulation and how to control and reduce visual stimulation so firstly we'll go through what is visual stimulation visual stimulation includes stimming often uh, it includes stimming which is seen in autistic people as a self stimulatory behavior it includes repetitive behavior such as staring or gazing at objects su such as ceiling fans or bright lights repetitive blinking of eyes or turning lights on and off hand flapping and eye tracking or peering from the corners of the eyes object placement such as lining up objects so what are the causes for visual stimulation or stimming so the causes are unknown and it is not fully understood the researchers have said the neuron uh, the nervous system in our brain releases some chemicals called and beta endorphins which also releases dopamines in the body do dopamines which gives pleasure sensation it provide comfort it provide provide comforts for the autistic children which can vary in intensity and type visual stimulation can also occurs occasionally or constantly they may be excitement happiness boredom stress fear anxiety and also when they are feeling overwhelmed so excitement is nothing but when the kid is excited seeing bright lights seeing uh, any of the colorful objects or any other things uh, such as flowers colorful objects um, bright lights as well as uh, some excitement things and uh, they get excited and show their uh, excitement behavior such as uh, uh, hand flapping and uh, hand flapping so uh, boredom is nothing but when the kid is bored and as well as they doesn't know how to play by other play with other kids so they play start playing with themselves and start uh, doing hand flapping or uh, looking at the or staring at the wheelie objects and all so they enjoy and satisfy their sense accordingly so there are different types of senses in our body as well as different senses which helps in stimming so there are vestibular stimming proprioceptive stimming visual stimming olfactory stimming as well as gustatory stimming so now we are talking about visual stimming so as as it is discussed earlier that visual stimming is uh, includes repetitive behavior it uses a person's sense of sight it may include repetitive behavior such as staring or gazing at objects such as ceiling fans or lights repetitive blinking or turning lights on and off moving fingers in front of the eyes and hand flapping eye tracking or peering from the corners of the eye or object placement such as lining up objects jumping running in the room that will also include stimming so what are the complications of stimming while stimming is often not a dangerous behavior it can have adverse physical emotional or social effects on some individuals for some stimming can include higher risk behaviors such as banging the head banging the hands and legs and objects which may potentially harmful so it is a non verbal method of communication when a kid is showing this kind of uh, behavior like uh, hand flapping or uh, gazing at some or the other objects or getting uh, getting excited and jumping running towards the towards the things we should understand that they want to communicate with us and want to show some or the other objects so if a person person does not understand what autistic people cope with their emotions through stimming this behavior can be upsetting distracting frightening or dangerous so how to control or reduce visual stimming Uh, visual stimulation or stimming it thought to provide pleasurable sensations and taking it any abruptly could be adverse effect which is not accepted so replacement behavior is uh, is the best option for the kid for example if a kid is continuously flapping his hands so we can ask him to put the hands in his pockets or we can ask him to tap uh, fingers uh, softly on his uh, arms or on the Lap. As well as we can give them a stress ball in their hand and ask them to squeeze a soft uh, uh, soft toy also. We can ask them to press the soft toys as well. For example, uh, if a if a kid 
is uh, does not like overcrowded areas then we should avoid kids uh, going to the overcrowded areas and uh, avoid the and make them and take them to less crowded areas if this this also if this uh, this behavior does not uh, reduce stimming then we have to opt another uh, uh, act, another uh, activity or uh, we can say recommend any of the other activity or something else which will reduce the stimming for and uh, as well as if a child continuously banging he banging their he heads on the walls we can re replace that behavior with the cushion placing cushions in at near the walls or placing cushions in front of them or bean bags and allow them to bang their heads on it so that they can satisfy the sense also so by this we can uh, replacement behavior should also provide the person with some pleasurable stimulatory or calming senses we can use even medication for reducing stimming but it will uh, it will show some adverse effect on the kids so occupational therapy or behavioral therapy will be the most effective therapy for the kid in behavioral therapy we can uh, uh, go through aba therapy which is applied behavioral analysis which which includes social communication and learning uh, skills through replacement strategies so if you are seeing your child getting worsen or getting calm by any of the activity what you are introducing you can replace that uh, uh, activity or skills differently so helping your child to understand what helping your child with autism we have to be consistent stick to the schedules like uh, uh, we have to maintain a schedule for uh, meals for doing activities for uh, doing any of the works what we want them to do so reward them with good behavior like whatever they are doing good in front of us like reading writing or any of the activity what they are completing or initiating completing as well as eating we have to encourage them by giving positive reinforcements like good job well done so this will helps in reinforcement create a home safety zone like uh, by creating a home safety zone it is uh, like placing colorful bands or colorful tapes at some point that by seeing that child must understand that it is the it is the thing they have to stop at that time then for non verbal communications look for non verbal cues like if they are jumping or running while excitement or when they get stressed out they start jumping and running towards the things what they want so look for non verbal cues figure out the motivation behind the tantrums and make time for fun play attention towards your child sensory sensitivity so here we can also go through sensory sensory integrated therapy which includes swiss ball trampoline sensory sensory board ball pressures as well as the weighted waist this all will include uh, calming down the senses as well as stimming for example if we are using a swiss ball we can use a swiss ball for calming down the vestibular stimming as well as visual stimming by giving compressions all over the body back and front while using the trampoline trampoline also helps in reducing vestibular as well as visual stimming as well as proprioception stimming that um, making child jump for 10 counts like 1 2 3 10 counts and asking him to hold that will increase child uh, that will increase uh, that will reduce child stimming as well as we can uh, work on the work work on to reduce stimming process as well as uh, we can use sensory board that spiky board to reduce the hand uh, clapping as well as hand stimming which is uh, basically seen in visual as well as tactile stimming so uh, putting weights on both the hands putting weights in both the legs and asking them to uh, hold the position on the sensory board will also reduce stimming process we can use uh, clay sand as well as uh, we can use uh, foam we can use foam for reducing uh, visual as well as tactile uh, tactile stimming Uh, now we can speak about the dark room activities also usually dark room activities uh, helps in reducing visual stimulations more like using using dark room or dull lights dull light or using torch light activity or laser light activities and uh, making them do all the activities like making them sit in a squatting position on the box or making them sitting in a sitting in the making them sitting uh, sitting 
and making them do all the activities what we are willing to. So, including the visual, uh, to reduce visual stimming, we can work on other senses also. So, using the dark room like uh, dark room activity, we can work on vestibular, we can work on olfactory, we can work on gustatory uh, as well as proprioception senses. So, for including vestibular as well as um, visual senses, we can make them do beat posting activity in a thread, sitting in cross leg position or squatting position in the dark room and making them do, do, do that activity. Fine, fine motor skills also, we can use a mesh board or we can use a, th uh, we can use a thermocol, uh, thermocol for replacement of uh, paints or the mushrooms what, uh, for uh, development of fine motor skills also. That will also help in attention concentration, eye contact and reduces visual stimming also, uh, visual stimming. In darkroom activities, we can also include Swiss ball compressions along with the sensory board. So these are some sensory integrated uh, therapy protocols what each and indi uh, every individual have, uh, must follow. So the, this is the treatment protocol what we have to follow. Then it is it should be kept in our mind when putting together a treatment plan for your child. There is no single treatment that works for everyone. Each kid of ASD is unique with different uh, strength and weaknesses. It should be tailored according to the individual's needs. You know your child's best, so it is up to you to make sure those needs are being met. Finally, keep in mind that no matter what treatment plan is chosen, your involvement is vital to success of your child. This is why your well-being is essential. So here, understanding child's uh, behavior and why stimming is uh, necessary for the parents to understand, as well as the therapist to understand. So, uh, okay, so how to reduce irritations with hand flapping? Okay, this is the question asked by Venkata Ramana the Dumpa. How to reduce irritations with hand flapping? Uh, we can uh, reduce irritation with, uh, and hand flapping by introducing the foam activities as well as sand activities. That will help in indulging their uh, hands within the sand or the clay or with the foam and making them do activities like posting of beads. We can uh, make them do suction fun activity on the mirror or you can use foam activities on the mirror by making them do uh, continuous moving, moving both the hands on the mirror. So we are having the questions coming on our way. So the first question is uh, how to reduce the toe walking? So toe walking can be reduced. It is a Vestibular stimming, it comes under vestibular stimming. So, toe walking can be reduced by putting weights like 1 kg weights. We can initially start by putting 1 kg weights on both the legs and making them do runaway posting activities or any other making them sit in a squatting position on a box or on a chair or we can also make them do walking from box to box or box to chair as well as we can make them stand on the bolster and make them do posting activities of beads in threads or uh, beads in a box as well as we can work on fine motor skills also. So putting weights like uh, we can gradually increase the weights like putting from 1 kg to 2 kg as well. And we can also place the footprints. We can give them the task goal orientations by keeping the footprints and ask them to walk on those footprints. So when they have the specific goal fixed in their mind, they will have the idea of walking specifically on those footprints and do the activities. And also we can reduce their using of more toes by making them hold a bead in between the toes. The great toe and the small toe usually use these two, two toes. So we can ask a kid to hold the bead in between their toes and walk along. And we can also introduce the heel walking as well. The heel walking can usually be a best thing to introduce to reduce the toe walking. We can introduce them to do that in an activity wise also. And in a normal way also we can command them to walk on their heel so that their uh, calf muscles can strain and they will use their toes as much as possible. They, they can also use their heels as much as possible to walk normally on the ground. So we have the next question. Uh, what is fidgeting and how can we reduce the fidgeting? Fidgeting is nothing but, fidgeting is nothing but con uh, continuously taking an object and rotating it. So, this fidgeting can be reduced by commanding 
as well as by making them indulge with other activities rather than giving the favorite things. And uh, fidgeting can also be reduced by giving weight bearing activities like functional activities, bear walking, and uh, duck walking, and as well as um, uh, military army crawling on the grass or sand. Okay. Uh, so the next question on our way is, uh, how do you reduce the habit of a kid looking at the ceiling fans or any kind of rotatory objects? Okay. So for this, we can use darkroom activities. Darkroom activities will be much more helpful. For example, um, or we can use dim light activities or lamp activities also. So putting a, a torch light on or using lamp, we can make them... Uh, we can make them sit at one place and making them make them do different activities or different uh, uh, pegboards we can use. We can introduce them for attention and concentration. So making them sit in a cross leg position and making them do other uh, several activities like beat posting activities we can do in a thread for uh, gaining attention and concentration. We can also make them do peg and hammer activities. We can also use uh, mesh board activities as well. So this will also help in reducing visual stimming, vestibular stimming as well as uh, helps in uh, in, helps, uh, in increasing fine motor skills. In darkroom activities also we can use laser, laser light activity like uh, pointing out the la uh, pointing laser on the wall and asking the child to uh, look after the light what we are taking, taking through the wall. So this way also the kid will concentrate uh, Kid will concentrate on light rather than other objects nearby. And also, uh, like when a kid is continuously looking at a ceiling fan or something, you first modify their behavior. First, allow the kid to look at the ceiling fan and then give a command to look at you. So in that way, you can just reduce the span of time you are he is looking at the ceiling fan. And also, you can reduce the distance. Okay, allow him to look at the ceiling fan from the close. Then slowly, slowly reduce the distance and the duration by giving the commands and asking him to look at you or involve him in some other activities. Then again, if he's going back and looking at the ceiling fan, then again, distract him from that. Or you can just command him to stop looking and look at you. In that way, you can also increase his attention concentration as, as well as a fine motor, uh, sorry, eye contact also. So we have the next question uh, from a parent. Uh, is uh, spinning is also a visual uh, seeking or stimming? Yes. St uh, spinning. Uh, like a kid sits on a chair or usually when they get excited, they start spinning. So it comes under, uh, uh, it starts with the vestibular stimming. That uh, the sense uh, along with the vestibular stimming, it helps in visual, uh, it also include visual stimming also. So, so while spinning, they look at some object like ceiling fan, yeah, uh, whatever the thing like ceiling fan or the while spinning, they will uh, look at their hands uh, flapping, fl they'll do flapping. So to control this uh, spinning and uh, uh, spinning, we can use uh, heavy activities uh, as well as we can use functional activities uh, for reducing spinning. So for you can gradually start with uh, uh, normally, we can start with bear walkings. We can uh, make them do duck walkings, bear walking, or uh, we can make them do army crawling. We can make them uh, walk, uh, crawl through the chairs or hurdles. Then slowly, slowly, we can put on uh, weights like one kg weights in both hands and legs, or we can put uh, we can put weights on waist as well. Then gradually increasing the weights from half kg to one kg, one kg to two kg. Once, uh, once the sen once uh, uh, they satisfy the sense, they stop spinning. Okay, so we have the next question. Uh, my kid is around four years old and uh, he usually uh, goes and touches every object that he likes and usually he goes and rubs his hands over the rough surfaces. So what is that thing and how to reduce it? Okay, so uh, this, this comes under tactile, uh, tactile stimming. So, tactile stimming is also interrelated with visual stimming also. So, for tactile, uh, to reduce tactile stimming, we can, uh, as she said, the kid constantly goes and touch the objects. So, uh, we can uh, start by foam activities or uh, placing hands in the 
clay or sand so that they can satisfy their sense. As well as he constantly rubs his hands on the rough surfaces. So to once he, he avoids soft surface and starts rubbing his hands on the rough surface. So we can introduce soft uh, uh, toys or the soft ball or uh, smiley balls or soft spiky balls. We can introduce or we can rub through the hands or the legs as well. So this will reduce their uh, tactile stimming as well as it will uh, satisfy their sense also. We can also use weight bearing activities in this. This will also reduce this along with tactile, it will reduce the vestibular stimming also. So as I already told you, uh, said prior that we can put uh, weights in both the hands and we can use sensory board also. Placing both the hands on the sensory board or placing both the legs on the sensory board and uh, making them do activities or uh, making them do bear walking posting activities or duck walking posting activities. As well as we can uh, for uh, tactile stimming, best uh, activity is the military crawling that we can make child crawl on the uh, grass floor or sand floor that will help in reducing tactile stimming. So the main criteria that comes under the tactile is if a kid is going and touching the rough surfaces, it is that means he is seeking towards the rough surfaces. So we have to make him introduce the soft ones. Initiate with the cotton. Okay, that is the softer thing that we have. So start with the soft things like the cotton and then go towards the tissue and then you can rub the brush also all over his hands and the legs. Okay, when he is seeking towards the soft surfaces, the criteria is we need to start introducing him the rough surfaces like the brush, then go towards the a little less rough surfaces uh, uh, like uh, any scratch bite kind of things and then uh, we can go towards the tissue and then towards the cotton. So go from the rough surfaces to the soft ones. Okay, uh, so the next question is, uh, my kid uh, doesn't sit at one place and he always roam around the rooms and, uh, and he always jumps and doesn't sit still at one place. So what is that condition called and how to reduce it? Okay, so as she said, uh, the kid, uh, usually runs uh, to uh, keeps keeps on running and jumping so this is this comes under vestibular stimming as well as this vestibular stimming also includes visual stimming so uh, looking at particular objects or looking at the things what they want they start running or jumping uh, in an excitement way so to reduce this first we have to command or make them do uh, make, we have to work on sitting tolerance activities so first make them sit in a uh, uh, cross leg position or a normal position and introduce them uh, normal activities like peg and hammer activity or uh, you can introduce other activities or pegboard activities also that you can introduce alphabet numbers uh, as well as you can give uh, beat posting uh, activity in a thread. These activities will also inc uh, uh, increase sitting tolerance, uh, increases eye contact, increases attention concentration as well as this will help in uh, uh, initiation of command following for the kids. Then uh, slowly uh, from sitting to uh, we can make them sit in a squatting position and we can make, continue making them do all these activities also. As well as for vestibular stimming, if the kid is continuously running, Swiss ball activities are of major importance. So making say, um, if a kid is very hyperactive, we can make a kid sit on a Swiss ball and make give them a uh, very slow rhythmic movements on the ball sitting and lying on the belly and lying on the supine. We can move the balls in to and fro motions, anterior and posterior movements on the ball. As well as we can uh, give compressions uh, through Swiss ball, uh, front of the body and back of the body, putting them uh, in a blanket, uh, rolling uh, them into a blanket. So this will also help in calming down vestibular stimming as well as uh, increase in sitting tolerance. Okay, uh, so we have the next question. Uh, how to reduce the gustatory sense in the kids, like uh, how to overcome that. Uh, my kid usually eats uh, certain things and avoids uh, certain foods like the apple, orange and grapes, etc. So, I want to know the solution of this gustatory sense, how to work on that. Okay. So, as she said, uh, the kid is a picky eater. So, sometimes uh, the kid might be eating the crunchy uh, um, crunchy things or he will be eating only the soft diet. So, depend, uh, by saying this, we can introduce food. 
by taking finger brush or uh, we can use uh, firstly to introduce food we have to do an oral massage like giving the uh, oral massage or oral manipulations like uh, moving to a uh, clockwise and anti clockwise movements of the uh, uh, movements exercises of the mouth then uh, this is the movement we have to do as well as the pressing of the jaws then uh, externally and internally internally how to press the jaws is by uh, taking the finger brush we have fine bristles on the finger brush by taking that we can uh, press the jaws as well as we can rub on the jaws that will uh, satisfy their sense as well as uh, their biting issue or the they, they might be having biting issues that will get uh, reduced and with along with the finger brush we can introduce food on the jaws or we can rub the food on the jaws and ask them to chew as well as we can use uh, uh, oral vibrators oral vibrators also helps in reducing oral uh, sensory issues so practicing this uh, will increase the gustatory sensations okay uh, so we have the next question my kid usually goes around and tap every object and wants to hear the sounds and he also murmurs around and he makes his own noises and wants to hear that and sometimes uh, my other kid uh, who is uh, always keeping his hands over the ears when he hears the loud noises what is this condition and the solution of it okay so as she said uh, that uh, the kid is prone to the loud sounds whenever the uh, loud sound comes like a uh, mixture grinding or uh, uh, we can uh, also tell uh, we can also ha ha horns uh, of cars as well so they keep on uh, it, it is it comes under uh, auditory stimuli uh, it includes if the child usually keeps his ears on the table surface and starts hitting this way so if it is do, if he is doing this way it comes under auditory stimuli or if he is keeping both the hands on the ears it also comes under auditory stimuli so to reduce auditory stimuli uh, if the child is prone to loud noises we can start from low lower sound noises or lower uh, frequency uh, lower frequency sounds like a uh, very soothing music to high pitched music we can use and if a child is prone uh, to low noises then we can start with loud frequency noises or sound effects like uh, we can use a uh, rat repellent sounds also we can use uh, other horns or the cooker vessels if they are prone to that we can use that effect and we can reduce the auditory sense okay so for that purpose we usually use the headphones and uh, put it on the ears of the kid and we start playing the sounds okay the sound which they are prone to we start with the opposite one we usually use the soothing music and uh, we introduce them that way and uh, we doesn't make us sit at a uh, kid sit at one place and just hear those noises we make those noises we have to make those noises as a normal thing in their lives so we involve them in the activities whatever the different activities we have by putting the headphones on and playing the music in the headphones so they get used to those musics and they will understand that this is a part of their life and this is actually a normal thing and nothing to be worried about and scared of next question okay so we have the next question okay uh, my child is uh, uh, covering his ears whenever he is hearing the same uh, loud noises okay so the question is the same one he is sensitive towards the auditory things like he will close his ears whenever he hears the loud noises and uh, the cooker whistles uh, or anything like a uh, loud horns or the loud music dj kind of music and um, if somebody also cries in the home or they, they cannot tolerate those kind of sounds so it is basically that thing only that is the auditory issue that the kid is facing and he is scared of even a little noise so we follow the same protocol okay put the headphones on and start playing a very yes. soothing music very very soothing music for the kid and then don't make him sit at one place with that music give him something to play with like any kind of uh, puzzles uh, or any kind of uh, beading activities uh, and uh, you can throw the bead and ask him to get it in any kind of positions like the bear walking or uh, duck walking 
anything. So simultaneously, we can work on the auditory issue as well as the different kinds of issues that a kid is having it. Okay, so the next question on our way is uh, how to reduce the spinning in a kid? Okay, the question is the same. Yeah, the question is the same. How to reduce spinning? So uh, as discussed earlier, we can reduce spinning by making them do sitting to tolerance activities. Um, uh, as well as we can uh, make them do spinning, but on a count, like 1 to 10. Make them uh, count for 1 to 10 and ask them to stop. So, by while uh, commanding stop, they must stop by themselves. And they should uh, indulge with the other activities also. So, we can make them do functional activities like uh, bear walking as well, duck walking, or you can make them do knee walking, holding swiss balls and all. Other activities like simple to compound we have to make. So, spinning can be reduced. Uh, from uh, by making them do functional activities and as well as we can put weights uh, as I said earlier we can put from half kg to 1 kg 1 kg to 2 kgs on both the hands both the legs or on the waist that will uh, help in reducing vestibular stimming as well as uh, satisfy the spinning sense okay uh, so the next question is my kid usually don't allow me to groom him like uh, when we do the haircut or uh, cutting the nails my kid will get irritated. So, how to resolve that issue and uh, how to overcome that problem? Okay, so grooming and all. Uh, they, the, if a child is not allowing you to touch uh, touch his his or her hairs or uh, does not allow you to cut down the nails, uh, this also comes under tactile stimming. So, uh, we can start. Uh, firstly, we can... Uh, Resolve the tactile senses like making them play with the sand, clays and all. After that, when they get uh, addicted to it, we can introduce comb. We can introduce uh, combing their hair, hair simultaneously when they are doing the activity. As well as when they are indulged with the activities, we can ask them to cut down the nails. So, we have to make sure that, uh, make sure that they are not getting hurt by this thing. By combing or uh, by cutting down nails. So, this way we can introduce and we can also follow a method of this, like we can play a music of a trimmer or any kind of object that we use for cutting down the hair at the scissors kind and just rotate that uh, phone towards their heads and everything. So they will feel like they will get used to that and they will understand that this is a normal thing that they are following up. So uh, just play that trimmer or a scissor sound in your phone and just rotate it or move it on their head by making them involved in some interesting tasks and their favorite activities. So they will get used to that in that thing and they will understand it as a normal thing. Thank you so much. Hope you have understood what is visual stimming and your questions and the queries are get answered properly. Thank you so much. Thank you.